Hello and welcome to Politics. Today I am Farooq Petafi. Viewers, uh, yesterday we spoke about uh, Pandora papers or Pandora box in Pakistan's politics. Once again, we are going to talk about that. As we pointed out yesterday, a new committee has been created by the Prime Minister of Pakistan. But that is not all. Uh, regarding the names, people are still asking, why is it that the entirety of 700 names have not been visible so far? Because last time when Panama Papers came, uh, at that time, and then uh, Patradise paper also, at that time, whatever was the list, it appeared in one go. This time it is not happening. Uh, whether uh, there is some reason behind it, or this is how actually things are rolling, uh, we are going to talk about that as well. There are concerns that all uh, influentials in the society are somehow connected. I am talking about the spheres of influence, media, uh, for ex <laughs> uh, politicians, bureaucrats, uh, and of course uh, various other businessmen. We are looking at the faces at this moment. We are going to talk about all that. And remember, yesterday we were talking about the question, if you are going to investigate, if you are going to take any action, what are the laws that are there? Why is it that after five, uh, almost six years of uh, Panama Papers, we haven't been able to create a solid uh, you know, framework that ensures that all these issues are actually regulated and uh, people know what is going on, or the state at least knows. And that we are going to do because in the absence of the uh, uh, parliament doing its job, then it is left to either uh, my shortcuts, some kind of techniques, use ECP, use another uh, system, or then to the courts to make law. We are going to talk about all these matters. I am going to introduce the guests in the uh, program as well. But before that, there is a package that our team has uh, prepared for you. Let us watch that. The Pandora Papers leak revealed the names of almost 700 Pakistani offshore company holders, which included politicians, bureaucrats, military officers and media moguls. The Pandora Papers were released by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists after an investigation of almost two years, sifting through 12 million leaked files, which included government records, bank records and tax advisor files. This revelation has taken the world by storm and it has become the talk of the town in Pakistan as well. Many of the people named in the Pandora Papers have come forward to deny any wrongdoings and some have even denied ownership of offshore companies. The Prime Minister of Pakistan has expressed extreme displeasure and ordered the formation of an investigation cell which will look into all the accused and strict action will be taken against all those responsible for any wrongdoings. Federal Minister for Information and Broadcasting Fawad Chaudhry said that the investigation cell formed under the Prime Minister's Inspection Commission would question all individuals that are part of the Pandora leaks and facts will be placed before the nation. The cell would determine whether the public office holders had declared their foreign assets and if not, a corruption case will be referred to the National Accountability Bureau. For money laundering, the case will be handled by the Federal Investigation Agency. In case of non-public office holders, the tax evasion matter would be forwarded to the Federal Board of Revenue. The Prime Minister himself has received flack by many media outlets for being involved in the Pandora Papers. However, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists has clarified that Imran Khan has had no link whatsoever with the Pandora Papers. Just to uh, frame the problem again, remember Panama Papers at that time the data that surfaced was around 2.6 TB uh, terabytes, right? And then in a, during Paradise Papers it was uh, 1.4 TB. This time it is 2.94 uh, terabytes. That is significantly bigger. Uh, last time in when we are talking about Panama Papers, the total number of cases or properties that were mentioned or uh, accounts was 11.5 million. Then Patradise Papers actually came and we found the number 13.4 million. And this time it is 11.9 million. And yet, we have talked about the terabytes also. Now, let me introduce the guest I've got in the program today. Uh, yesterday, we tried to actually talk to politicians and it, one felt that one was not getting a clear uh, you know, a discussion 
on the frameworks that I kept on asking about. Today, therefore, we have two lawyers. Uh, Barrister Safir Laghori joins us uh, in the studio. He, uh, but during uh, Panama Papers, he was also involved in the litigation. Thank you very much sir, for being part of the program. Naseem Siddiqui Saab is a senior journalist. He also joins us, uh, a dear friend. Thank you very much, Naseem Siddiqui Saab, for being part of the program. On Sky, we are joined by Mohammed Zishan Merchant Saab, who is advocate, High Court, Tax and Corporate, uh, corporate Law. Uh, uh, and he's uh, also a consultant. Thank you very much sir, for being part of the program. Barrister, Barrister Safi, with your permission, I first have to actually sure. go to Merchant Saab. Uh, Merchant Saab, your take on what laws apply to these matters and uh, whether uh, the word uh, offshore company is present on any statutory books? Uh, actually, uh, we have to look at the statutory from the perspective is that income tax ordinance cater for every possible scenario. If a resident Pakistani has any world assets or world income, he has to declare those assets and world income, not only his income tax return, but also in his wealth statement. And uh, if he has earned any income outside Pakistan, then he has to pay tax not only in the foreign jurisdiction, but okay. if the tax payable is more in Pakistan, he would get the tax credit of the tax already paid outside Pakistan. And the right. difference... That's a payable. good point. Uh, so you have to first disclose it. Uh, if you yes, don't absolutely. disclose it, how does the state of Pakistan learn that Farukh Pitafi has uh, an offshore account in so-and-so country? So Pakistan is signat signatory to OECD conventions. And yeah. those conventions now uh, make in th those convention now ensures that the information is exchanged on a regular basis. For instance, okay. if Mr. Patavi, you have an account outside Pakistan and that is not declared, the mm -hmm. uh, if is if that account is in let's say in Dubai, then mm -hmm. the Pakistan and Dubai they both are the signatory of OECD convention, and Dubai will exchange that information with the Pakistani tax authorities if you right. are not a Dubai resident. This agreement so, uh, that you are talking about, Merchant Saab, when was it signed? It's It's been signed. Actually, it was signed. Uh, Dubai signed it last year, and Dubai started sending information since last year. But okay. UK has been sending this information since 2018 onwards. Right. So uh, right. when this amnesty was in place, this uh, agreement was already signed and then right. there is so why why is it that so i and allow me actually actually i'm going to bring the same question to uh, uh, the studio as well but just us up if there are laws regarding this and agreements why do i have to listen to icij to know who is actually uh, you know stashing wealth or uh, accounts abroad. So that's a very good question. And uh, as Merchant Sab just mentioned, so we do, we are signatories to the OECD convention, but that does not cover a lot of offshore havens yeah. that uh, uh, organizations like ICIJ are now exposing. Yeah. And that's where the majority of the money is. That's yeah. where the real problem is that, you know, you, you might have treaties of information it, exchange uh, with the UK, does with it the US. Cover the Swiss banks? I'm, I'm not aware if it covers the Swiss banks, but I am aware that Switzerland has been increasingly becoming more transparent. I am okay. not sure if Pakistan has a bilateral or a multilateral treaty at, uh, at the moment with Switzerland. But that said, the problem really lies with these little offshore island com countries, right. uh, British Virgin Islands, Mauritius, uh, Macau. This is where the majority of the world's money is being routed to. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, also, uh, uh, you know, correctly pointed out that, you know, there is a massive tax problem and the income tax ordinance does cater to it. But we have two, three other laws as well mm -hmm. that also cater to this entire problem. Okay. And one of the most important laws that I feel we need to bring up is the law that was introduced last year, but has become mandatory mm -hmm. on everyone who owns any sort of business in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And that is the SECP anti-money laundering wing, mm -hmm. wherein they have introduced the concept of universal beneficial ownership. <coughs> so if any person owns any assets abroad, any assets abroad, they must declare it to the SECP and that declaration goes directly to the anti-money laundering wing. Okay. That anti-money laundering wing will then determine... The name frightens me. Yes. But the fact is that I don't give any declaration. I hide facts. 
then what happens? That's how that's, how that's good? That's precisely why and this o, is not, OECD, you're absolutely correct. This OECD is, doesn't declare it or whatever the reason. So you're absolutely correct. So this is, this is what the problem is. This is precisely why we are in the state of the world where there is a flight of money from the poorer countries into the richer countries, as the Prime Minister Imran Khan keeps saying. Trillions of dollars are flowing because obviously there is not sufficient exchange of information. Right. There, that's ob obviously what the problem is. And that is precisely why leaks such as these are so important and need to be taken into account without thinking about them as being malicious or being... Uh, Whether they are malicious or not, yeah. my concern is it is government of Pakistan's job. Why is somebody else actually doing it, right? So the, so the government as of per the law, how do you define which one is a cognizable uh, offence in this case? Right. So, okay. So, so uh, let's let's look at a variety of offences then, and then we can decide which ones are cognizable and which ones are not. Can Can so, you actually uh, compile uh, a list till the time I actually <laughs> bring in my third guest, who is very patiently uh, waiting uh, for it? Sure. Uh, uh, Siddiqui Saab, this time, I was noticing media was uh, covering these reports, but uh, many names were actually of media owners. So who's who's going to bell the cat? They are very powerful people. Who's going to actually hold them accountable? Because tomorrow, media channels are going to actually tell us that it is a repetition of free media. Thank you very much, Farooq. I was going to start with this thing as well, and you asked the same question. Yeah, thank because, you very much. Yeah, because but most I, I thought that I shocked you. Because no, 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 for a second, no, no, I, I thought that you were surprised I'm asking you. I was expecting the same question because when you are showing too many faces of politicians, yeah. and uh, their names were in Panama as well before, and now in the Pandora as well. Mm. And if the names of the media personals are here, it should be given in the media as well. That should the positive reporting yeah. and that is the other side of the picture as well. Mm -hmm. If it's all legitimate, nobody should be frightened of all these things. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I've noticed from the last two days that there was a big hype for Pandora uh, leaks, right. but it's not like Panama leaks. Okay. Because in Panama there was... Slightly better than Paradise though, because mm -hmm. in Paradise we hardly see, saw any names. Yeah. But this time... Hardly. Uh, perhaps it is because last time there was a prime minister exactly. who was involved and this time they isn't. Yeah. And we are lucky <coughs> that this time prime minister's name hasn't even been mentioned. And for most of the names, those were in Panama as well. Like, what is the authenticity of these names bringing out? Like, uh, if we see that Punjab ex-minister Alim Khan name is there yeah. and his offshore company has been mentioned again in Pandora. But he has mentioned that company 15 years ago in the election commission as well and in his assets as well. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with him, but his, na his name has been highlighted a lot many times here. Yeah. Okay. So there are no, uh, hang on, hang on. Um, as journalist, it is not my job or your yeah. job to actually declare who is innocent and who is not. We can publish their clarification, right? Uh, but it is ultimately th uh, the job of the text ath authorities, state of Pakistan and the courts to decide who is innocent and who is not. I understand that you are actually uh, ju just relaying what he was saying, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether everybody is looking at his offshore assets at this moment because they, he has acquired significant onshore assets Yeah, as he, well. he just bought yeah, a TV channel. Uh, TV <laughs> channel. <laughs> so perhaps people might be uh, discussing that as well. Uh, let me go back to uh, Zishan Merchant Saab. Zishan Saab, what offenses are we talking about here and under what law? I'm sorry, could you say that again? You'll have to talk louder, sir. Yeah. You have to say that again. I missed your sentence. Question. Uh, we are talking about offshore companies. Uh, right. We are talking about the revelations that came out. And the question uh, to, uh, in my mind is, uh, uh, if we are uh, building up so much hype, there must be some crime. What are those crimes? Actually, uh, when we speak of the word offshore company, the immediate thought comes in our mind as Pakistanis is that something is fishy, something is wrong, something is hidden. You see, mm -hmm. we need to look at the fact that the law provides that if I earn any amount of income which is in excess of $10,000 or, or if I own assets in excess of $100,000, I have to declare that in my wealth statement and income tax return. So okay. the question arises when, if I haven't declared those assets or income, 
and mm -hmm. the in, uh, evidence suggests that I'm the owner of that. I mean, mm -hmm. there is uh, anti-money laundering cell in FBR also, which does all this checks and which does check the assets and all the information that is coming into Pakistan and the right. uh, fact that companies, uh, SECP has this section 452 wherein you, if there is any company outside Pakistan and if I'm the shareholder or if I'm yeah. the ultimate beneficial owner, I have to declare that with SECP here in Pakistan as well. And if I do not, not do uh, that. Uh, hang on, hang on. So what you're saying is not declaring is the actual offense, nothing else? Absolutely, because then, then your return is a misdeclaration return. Because when you sign or when you submit your return, you uh, give this uh, verification that everything that you own is okay. declared in this statement. And the, you certify that statement and when you file your return, it's a, a valid declaration that everything is declared therein. And if something is not, then it means that either it is uh, an ill-gotten money which you are trying to hide or right. there can be and any other... Uh, solution to that uh, there can be any other preposition to that right uh, right uh, much up uh, i'll have to um, i'll come back to you sir i'm told that federal minister for information uh, is with us uh, for watch sahab has joined us on telephone for watch sahab thank you very much for your time now the question at this moment is uh, the government has created um, a high power committee uh, uh, what will be its towards and how soon Will it actually bring about the results? Well, uh, if you look at uh, what Pandora Papers is all about, 700 Pakistani individuals have been mentioned as having offshore companies. And right. uh, as you know, having an offshore company, maybe Prima Fashai doesn't constitute any offense, mm -hmm. unless it's not declared in Pakistan or... Okay it has been used for money laundering. So right. the cell we have constituted will now look at the FDR record, uh, mm -hmm. the wealth tax returns of all these individuals who have been named in the uh, Pandora Papers <coughs> to ascertain that whether <coughs> they have declared their companies with FDR or not. Mm -hmm. okay. If they have not declared these companies, this mm -hmm. entails obviously the consequences the consequences now are of the two uh, types mm -hmm. there can be the taxation proceedings or the tax evasion cases and mm -hmm. if the companies are used for money laundering then obviously there can be a cases for uh, money laundering and fia and fpr and nab have, will be associated with these investigations right for what, uh, since we are talking about 700 people uh, and so far what has actually uh, been telegraphed to the media is uh, hardly that kind of number. Does the government of Pakistan have access to all these 700 names? So ask ICIJ that uh, your own uh, website claims that there are 700 Pakistanis named in the Pandora papers. So we would like to have access to their record so we can tell you that names with our FDR record. Right. Uh, do we have any, because you are also uh, uh, an accomplished lawyer, do, do we have mechanism to seek that information because th this organization actually is not uh, based in Pakistan? No, but this is a public uh, charity uh, organization that uh, actually works under a charity and all the information they collect is uh, for public purpose. So mm -hmm. the selective, uh, you know, kind of uh, exposures uh, won't help. So they have to provide all the names. Right. And regarding the high, um, uh, you know, um, actually influential office bearers uh, within various parties and then media and others as well, does the government actually at, uh, uh, plan to take any actions before the inquiry is over? Uh, perhaps uh, in the past we have seen that there, there were names that were mentioned, they st voluntarily stepped aside. Is there a possibility of that sort, sir? See, there, there are three, uh, uh, you know, 
the minister's name, uh, yeah. the shocker Tareem Saab, for example, he yeah. had an offshore company, but his explanation is very solid. What he says yeah. is that what he said is that he created a company to negotiate with the state bank a deal of Silk Bank, the bank he owned. So now if a company is created solely to negotiate a deal with the state bank, how yeah. will that be an illegal company? Yeah. Uh, likewise, if a company of Khosrow Bakhtiar's brother is, and Khosrow Bakhtiar is named, but his company is declared in FPR. So these are the kind of stuff that is now coming up. So let's see, let's wait for the conclusion of the inquiry. Right. For watching this is Federal Minister for Information. Thank you very much sir, for being part of the program. Uh, viewers, we take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we are going to further this discussion. Take a break. Welcome back. Uh, before going to the break, we were talking about Pandora Papers. Uh, uh, a friend of mine actually called it Pandora Papers because he thought that there mm -hmm. is more uh, speculation and noise rather than substance. But regardless, we were talking about which uh, offenses might be there. And I'm going to, well, earlier I stopped as Zishan Merchant sir, but I'm actually, let me continue, yeah. then I'm going to reach back to him as well. Barrister Safi, when I actually went ahead, I left you with the question of offenses yeah. which might be committed and under what law? Yeah, all right. So declaration is one thing. Okay. What else? So, so, so first, let's look at first. I think it's necessary that we differentiate the kind of people who can be accused of any offences. Okay. And there are two types. So there's this the general businessman and the media moguls and everybody else who's being talked about, who should not be in the same category as politically exposed persons. People who have a political interest. Hang on, hang on. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you why. I'm sorry. I'm tell sorry. You, I'm I'll sorry. tell you why. Sorry I'm getting. No, no. Why. Sorry to yes. cut you. You are saying that media owners. And Not don't have any political power no, no, or saying, any businessman who is randomly. He might be very powerful. No, no, hang on, hang I'm on, just hang on. Hang on. Allow me, and I'll uh, tell you why. Allow me to yes. just slip <laughs> in one more anecdote that a random property tycoon yeah. whom, who might be so uh, you know, powerful that he lends or gifts his vehicles, his plots, yeah. and his planes to people, because that person is not powerful. That person is extremely powerful, okay. but Article 63, 64 Constitution don't apply to them. So now, the problem here is that <coughs> politically exposed people have a separate set of laws, and that's okay. what I'm trying to get to. That because, because they and have. I'm saying that politically exposed persons have the wrong definition. Even so, that's that's for the that's for the parliament to decide what politically exposed people are. Okay, but this time just, parliament will yes. decide, but not the court. Let's let's just for, for for a second then. Let's for a second let's let's focus on what the the differentiations are that the law has created yeah. before we jump into uh, whether these are practical definitions to begin with or not. So, looking at the legal definitions of uh, what we have, we so first of all, the most the, the people who would be hit hardest by this are what you would call politically exposed people. Thanks to Article 63, 64, in which they have to be 62, 63. 62, yeah. 63, yeah. yes. And in which they have to file the returns before the Election Commission in Pakistan declaring right. all of their assets. Right. And this is the reason why Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif was disqualified. So all of these people are right. now facing po possibilities of disqualification if they have not declared their right. assets before the Election Commission and right. before relevant authorities. Okay. That's one thing. Now moving forward on to the people who are businessmen, rich tycoons, media yeah. moguls and what have right. you. These people have a separate set of laws that apply to them, A, FBR laws that have already been discussed in detail, mm -hmm. uh, B, SECP laws that have also been discussed, C, there is yet another bunch of laws that apply, which is how was the money sent. The okay. Foreign Exchange Manual of the State Bank of Pakistan governs the transfer of money from Pakistan abroad, and that has to be declared once again with the State Bank. Right. Any penalty there would once again land you in problems. Then we have the problem of the no, FIA. No, any violation that actually doesn't trigger an alarm will incur penalty only to the abuser or the, the facilitator like a bank as well. So this is this. So when when it comes to money laundering, they are obviously not happening through banks. Money laundering happens. <coughs> obviously, yeah. How so do you know that? Because ma banks have to report everything to the state bank. Banks have a very so. Uh, with, you, with the coming of FATF, banks have. Have you had, gone through the FinCEN reports? 
there have been there have been problems no, in not only our country no. india yeah, globally yes so there are irregularities but generally the law and especially fatf is ever since pakistan has been on the gray list okay the, the requirements as far as the banks are concerned are okay i'm going to take high. the word bank back yes and i'm going to call them facilitators Yes, in uh, facilitators have uh, punishments met out to them okay. because anyone who facilitates, even law firms, by the yeah. way, the law lawyers are usually m more suspect than other what people are. What are the are. punishments for them? I don't, I don't know the punishments off the top of my head, but these are all criminal offences. Yeah, I'm going and to all ask Machan Sahib later. But uh, earlier, I asked him uh, this question: Is the word offshore company mentioned in any of power laws? <sighs> if uh, not to my knowledge, no. I, I don't believe that the word offshore has been specifically mentioned. Okay. Uh, but the word foreign companies or have come about. tax havens? Tax havens, are, these are colloquial words. These are not words that have any legal what meaning. Are, what might but be the technical words? Just any foreign entity, any foreign company. So, mm, so, that, you so can the law does not concern that. itself with, with tax havens no, no, and with on, which uh, the jurisdiction is. Any foreign entity becomes very agnostic term. It has no value of its own. It, it you does, cannot because, do that. Because any, any, any foreign company, we, foreign company is a word that's very often yeah, used but with the SECP Companies Act and also with the FBR. Yeah, but so there is a clear substantive difference that you acknowledge. Why is it that our yeah. law is not our seen law, that? Our law as yet, because, because if it were to, this would, this would trigger an international debate as to what qualifies as a tax haven and what does not. Right. Pakistan would be forced to categorize certain countries which would bring the flak from those countries onto mm. our diplomatic right. circles. Siddiqui sahab, uh, there is a reason I keep on asking about the 700 names not yet being revealed, right? We have this, media wallas uh, especially had this fixation with a few prominent names, right? It happened during Panama Papers. First it was about few politicians, then it became about few families, then one family, then one man, and then of course, it also somehow uh, went away that the gentleman in question is sitting in UK, right? Uh, NRO also, if you remember, uh, at that time, everybody kept on talking about People's Party or the government of the time or the government which was coming. Nobody thought that MKM and tons of bureaucrats actually got the benefit. Is there a possibility that our media, while it very kindly uh, uh, builds up the hype, can actually focus on the entirety of the program, uh, problem, not a few select cases? Exactly, you are absolutely right. But you have seen that what happened with Panama, as you said, that nothing happened. Yeah. Nothing came out of Panama. So nothing is going to come. Something came out. Something Somebody came out. Somebody was sent to court, uh, jail. Yeah. And then he walked out. Then he walked out. And now the Pandora leaks, I don't think so. Something will come out from this as well. Only it's media hype and just to blame game to each other okay. in, the, in, in the politic field I just want to know from you as well from him as well no, that what is, the, what is what is <laughs> what is the legality of these tech sevens are these legal yes as far as I know in London most of the places there are tech sevens and people put their money in investments over there if somebody f from Pakistan they have shifted their money to the UK, France or anywhere legally and then they have made companies over there and they are working there and they are paying tax in those countries. So what is the point if the names are right. being out? And it's, it's a beautiful question and one we have been discussing in the past as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, let me admire your deflection capacity. <laughs> yeah, I ask you what media can do to ensure that all these 700 people are identified and that media doesn't pick or choose, but it actually builds a case against the whole operation. Why I, I see they haven't given the names of the other people yet? Because they have, have you asked? They, they, no, they has will, anybody asked we, their we, reporters? We never asked them to give the names of the politicians. Uh, Chima, mm -hmm. a, a person who has incredible mm -hmm. credibility and who has contributed mm -hmm. to this. Mm -hmm has been all over the media channels, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has anybody asked where are the other names? Yeah, yeah. People are asking. I have sh seen many programs today. They were asking for the names as well. Umar Chima was part of that. 
he was not heading that one. So no, I, no, so, I'm not so my ICIJ question, ICIJ yeah, yeah, ICIJ. Here. My question is to ICIJ is that why they have just given the names of You're the politicians? Questions. You are <laughs> not giving answers. <laughs> why they? What can but, media do to ensure that all these people stay in focus? No, media I is am. still. I'm, I'm going to media, go media is still say, saying that if somebody has got ill-gotten money and they have made companies overseas or in the tax havens, they must be brought into the notice of the FBR or to the election commission if they are uh, the members of the no, assembly. But media's responsibility primarily is, is to its viewers, is it not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you are telling, you might go to FBR and tell them whatever you want. Mm -hmm. If you are not uh, actually, if you are selective in telling people what is going on, no, then there is a problem. They are not selective. Whatever the names has been given, they have just shown those one. If the okay. other names uh, come Panama out as well. Panama Papers, 400 uh -huh. names, right? Do you remember who was the third or fourth name in no, the list? No, I don't remember. Why? Because, the because we were consuming the same media. <coughs> yeah. We are part of it, but we are consuming. Yeah. But media actually deflects, doesn't focus on the real Yeah, problems. because the people are not ready or they are not interested to listen the name of me or yours name. They also no, uh, take it interest. Is, it is based on the skill of the media to hmm. actually, we are, we work in the profession which is of storytelling. If we don't know how to tell the story, if, 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 then there's if, if problem we, with my if, information if we, or my capacity. If we show that Mr. Anwar Ali or somebody else name is there, so the, the public is not interested. When we take the names you, you of the politicians, tell, you will tell even, the people even when how tell, uh, Muhammad Ali or whatever the name yeah, yeah. is influential hmm. and he affects your lives. Will, will that you not can matter? see that most of the people, those were in uh, corruption cases. So the people you'll are ask everybody themselves. a question. Mm -hmm. You will not ask your yeah. own profession <laughs> uh, why we are doing what we are doing. I, right? I just have an observation. Very quickly, to make. I have yes, to very turn quickly. Go to the, the observation that I have, and it's something that's been perplexing me, is when the when it was announced that uh, the Pandora box would be released before the names came out. Why is it that the government of Pakistan, through uh, some uh, notables went on TV and said the Prime Minister's name is not on it and why the Finance Minister decided to hold a press conference before his name even came out. Yeah. And so this is what makes me curious as to how these people knew that their names would be in it or not be in it. No, actually uh, this was a long exercise. These people were questioned <coughs> first and then this declaration was made, right? And the first they were given uh, an opportunity to explain but themselves. But how did they know the Prime Minister's name is not on it? Because he wasn't questioned? I see IJ actually mentioned this, right? After, they, they after said, releasing the names. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but Marjan Saab, uh, uh, earlier you were talking about uh, the offenses. Uh, let me ask you about uh, the three uh, basic questions. One. Uh, earlier, I asked our friend here whether the word offshore company, tax havens, or something of that sort actually appears in our law. If not, how do you tell uh, foreign assets which are good and foreign assets which might be in murky territory, right? Uh, the second thing is now, if you find out that there are these accounts and there is money illegally stashed outside, you can punish the person. But how do you bring the money back? Hmm. Sir, go ahead. So I, 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 have, I have two questions. Did you ask two questions only? Because I yeah, I questions. have, I have. So, okay, so, okay. The income tax ordinance has section one zero seven, which yeah. says that, which is for agreement for avoidance of double taxation and prevention yeah. of fiscal evasion. Yeah. You see, and under yeah. this section, there is this mm -hmm. clause which says that the information will be exchanged. And okay. that's that clause is uh, clause E, where it says that exchange of information for prevention of fiscal evasion or avoidance of taxes on income chargeable under this ordinance and under the corresponding laws enforced in that other country. So, okay. this is the condition which is present under the income tax ordinance and as, mm -hmm. as i was saying earlier that there is there are multilateral agreements that have been signed by all these countries to exchange right. the information that if i am a resident in pakistan and if i have a bank account outside pakistan where i am a non resident for that jurisdiction that jurisdiction will provide this information to pakistan 
and then the laws uh, the officers of the fbi over here will first right. check that that, that bank account much yeah. up, uh, let me agitate your point. You are, uh, I understand that you are talking about international agreements and you are yes. talking about a century which becomes international law. Uh, just right. tell me if uh, it is basically based on good faith, you know, operations. But tomorrow, if an organization chooses not to cooperate despite having this agreement and then withholds any information, what uh, what is the recourse we have take an example of dubai that it has categorically stated that they will not provide the information of immovable property they will only okay. provide the information of movable assets and they have categorically okay. stated that that they will not provide the uh, uh, the details of any immovable assets or the properties that have been held by these pakistanis in the no, so no. My point is, about. whatever the information they are liable to give you, if they decide not to give you that information, you don't do tell about you about it. What is the legal recourse you have as a signatory? You, you, you can. I mean, claim uh, that you can write to the governments, and it is the agreements between the governments only. And you, okay. you go through a proper channel. You ask the government, and if they do not cooperate. You do not, you cannot do anything about it. So far, my knowledge okay. is little right. what I Right. Uh, do you have any case or any example where this might have produced some good results? Yeah. So uh, when this, when the Supreme Court in 2018 raised these Dubai property cases, the FBR sent notices to everyone. Firstly, FIA sent the notice. But since FIA was out of jurisdiction, then FBR sent these notices, and a lot right. more, and a lot more cases were made out of that information, based on that information, which was somewhat correct but not accurate. But then after that, the ministry came and people declared that those assets and a lot of revenue was collected. So yes, right. that information which is being exchanged to certain exchange bring the results, the desired results. However, okay. as the digitization is going on and the world is uh, uh, these days, I would say, squeezing and the information is readily available, it's going to become right. very hard in the future to have an offshore company but not declaring it. In the past... Right. OECD was, agreement, uh, does it yes. cover offshore companies, offshore uh, uh, tax havens? The term offshore, I have to check, but yes, the different the the purpose of oecd is to exchange all the information of the non-residents with the resident company what does our law call an offshore company sir how does it actually address them foreign, it's a foreign company the word offshore is just a foreign company in the ordinance. yeah so it doesn't matter whether it is in the united states or cayman island yes uh, won't you say that that is pretty ambiguous a term? You see, I mean, I, I mean, I am just looking at section 123 of the ordinance. It does mention where an offshore asset of any person. I am sorry, okay. I was wrong earlier, but it it does mention an offshore asset of any person not declared earlier is discovered by the commissioner or any hmm. department or any agency of federal government. The commissioner can assessed that property or asset to tax if the person does not provide an adequate right merchants up very quickly do we need further work on tightening the system you see under fatf and under anti-money laundering no, no, i'm act, not talking about fatf my concern yeah, is as a the, citizen and, and i and don't AML have to worry about that the, the things are being squeezed and now that dnfbps designated non-business finance professionals are also obliged to give the information to FBI if they see any wrong doing being ha wrong thing happening with these right with it's a files. long answer sir I don't have the luxury of that kind of time very quickly yes or no we need further work uh, we, we need further work but more than that we don't need further work I think the global community needs further agreements to ha facilitate the flow you of money you ask back to a lawyer countries. to give a yes yeah. or no answer yeah, yeah, they do, will, do they yes, will yes, never give you that <laughs> <some time>. yeah <laughs> 
Uh, right, sir. I'm, I'm told, uh, Machan Saab, uh, that we have to conclude the program. Barrister Safiullah Ghori, thank you very much sir, for you. being part of the program. Naseem Siddiqui Saab, uh, thank you very much uh, for being part of the program. Uh, because uh, it is a developing story. So as long as the developments continue, we will be discussing these matters. But so far, uh, there is hardly any place for any of us to make a judgment call. It is essentially the job of courts and the authorities that actually have the oversight capacity. There are two meanings of oversight, one to keep on looking at things, the other one when you actually ignore the facts. So let us hope it is the first oversight that continues, not the second one. This was today's program. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.